Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. I finished the uh, dust boot uh, for the X-Carve and I've got it fitted here. But I've used it already and uh, there was very little dust that escaped. Just a little bit escapes at the back. Now after moving the X-Carve to the new location I went through all my checks again to make sure it was running square and true uh, and the only thing I noticed had changed very slightly uh, was uh, the uh, business of whether it's running uh, parallel to the plane of the cutting board. Now I'm not going to make any attempt to improve mine but it's very easy to do if you wish to do it yourself. Uh, then there are two methods I'd recommend. Uh, the first and probably the more difficult is to put a, a new sheet of uh, wasteboard material into position, screwed down to the frame, and then run a cutter over the whole surface uh, at a set height. And that then would take just a skim off uh, all the way over, and then you'd guarantee that the XY motion of the X-carve is running parallel to the uh, new wasteboard. That's one method. The easier method, although you might think it more elaborate, is to put some shims underneath the existing wasteboard. So loosen up the screws which are all the way around and then put some shims under. Now these shims would have to be accurate to within, um, I would suggest, about 0.1 millimetre. And so you need to find the right material to use. And it could be that sort of very thin clear plastic one gets when you buy something. It could be uh, paper, uh, whatever it might be, and then you double up, treble up, or whatever to get the uh, height that you desire. And you can check it with some form of a caliper. Uh, and then you position those strategically around and then tighten the board down. And you need to make sure that you graduate them. So if you've got uh, nothing there and one uh, piece of cardboard or whatever there, then you'd need two there and that sort of thing. So that's probably the easier way to do it. Right, so the x carve is all set up and now I want to demonstrate it. And I've actually had a practice go and this is what we're about to make. It's a picture frame uh, and some of it is being done on the CNC and some of it is being done by normal woodwork. I'll just take the back out and so you can see this is the part that I did on the CNC and I'll describe how this was done shortly. The other part uh, is just a normal piece of woodwork, it's a rectangle of wood uh, with a little support glued and screwed onto it and that fits in in there like so. Now in this video I'm not showing any of the detail of how I used VCarve Pro, a Vectric product, uh, in order to uh, produce the tool paths necessary uh, for this piece of work. Uh, I will make a separate video of that which will be posted shortly. Now this piece is very simple to make. It's a rectangle of wood and it's then had three separate bits of machining done. Three, three tool paths. The first was with a 90 degree V cutter which cut this part out here and the second one was with a spiral up cut uh, cutter quarter inch uh, and that uh, was used on the inside of this chamfered piece that we've created and then I turned the piece over and again with the same spiral up cut cutter uh, I then relieved the back and so this is uh, the final appearance of what we have. Uh, we've done that partial bit of V cutting there which has produced that chamfer. Uh, we did the, the straight cut downwards from that same side to produce that clean edge there. We then turned it over and did the rebate cut into here which provides the space then for the glass which goes across the picture obviously and then the, the backing piece which would be there. And here once again is the, the finished piece. You can see it's got rounded corners here. Well, it's not, not a problem. The, the radius is only um, uh, an eighth of an inch, so it doesn't matter. Nice deep channel here. Uh, and then that lovely little chamfer on the inside with a little bit of relief going downwards by about a, a millimetre and a half. So I'm really pleased with the way that's come out. Now I'll need to flip my piece of wood to do the underside and it's important that everything ends up absolutely spot on. So I've got a corner cut out, it's made of a bit of um, thin bamboo uh, and I've cut a, a, a nice little square corner out and that's locked into my bench top so now when I flip the piece of wood over I know I'm going to be able to get it absolutely spot on. And the first cut we're going to do is this chamfered edge here using the 90 degree V cutter.
so that's that done and I'm now going to change the tool uh, and we'll do the next cut. So that's the new cutter in place. I've just raised the uh, cutter now and I'm going to move everything out of the way so I can move the uh, material around. You can see how close this gets to the bottom of the dust boot here. Uh, if those uh, bristles were longer then this would be up a bit higher. So we're now going to flip it over and because I've got this piece here that means that I can flip it over like that and easily get this back in the right position. Now there's one slight difference this time and that is this cut is going to go all the way through and we're going to uh, take away the piece in the middle and I don't want that to go flying around so I've put a screw uh, hole through and I'm screwing into one of the uh, little captive nuts which are in the bench and I'm screwing it down really tight I really don't want that to move at all so that's done uh, those are tightened up So there on the screen it says job complete. And there you have my shape. This is where the piece of glass will go and the, and the backing piece which is just simply cut on a saw. It doesn't need to be cut out with the CNC. But you see how easy it is to make a rather nice shape. Uh, the total tool time uh, was probably around about uh, six minutes for this. Uh, and the actual total time, if I wasn't filming, would probably be about 15 minutes total. Now whilst we're here, let's just look at the amount of dust that's escaped. Uh, there's a little bit over here, some here. Now all this would be solved if there was a way of closing the gap uh, for the bristle at the back here. And that would be then absolutely super. Now this is a really important uh, step now, is to check the accuracy of the manufacture of this item and I'm going to start by checking to see how square uh, the apertures are. Now I'm hoping that you can see this. Now f as far as I'm concerned that is as good as anything needs to be. Now I have rounded off this corner by the way just in case uh, you're wondering so that it will fit in into that uh, rounded corner there. So I'm happy about the squareness. Now the depth of this rebate which I've done all the way around here. And I'm going to measure at the two ends. Just there it's 9.1 and just here it's 9.06 and now you understand why I'm so happy uh, with the X-carve. <laughs> Well that has turned out really well, another absolutely super duper uh, test carve. And I hope you can see there is virtually no dust here whatsoever, just a tiny bit just here. And it really is a tiny bit. And that's MDF that I was cutting. <laughs> uh, you might be wondering why I've got the word competition there. Right, right. Now look, I've made no bones about the fact that uh, I prefer using VCarve Pro to easel. And there's no wonder really, uh, because of VCarve Pro uh, is a program aimed at professional CNC users. Uh, it's had a lot of development. It's an expensive package. It's over £500 in the UK. Easel is free. And uh, although I'm not a great fan of it, it is a great resource. And it means that you can get on and do carving without having to uh, use intermediate programs like Universal G-Code Sender. And it's great for someone who's new to CNC work.
But as I'm not a fan of it, I thought, well, uh, I've got to be fair and balanced in this video and, and so on. So we've got a challenge and it's a competition. And I'm really grateful uh, to Inventables for really uh, joining in the spirit of this. And the idea is this. I've produced uh, this uh, picture frame uh, using VCarve Pro. Uh, and I, I really like it and it's nice and simple. It's very easy for me to do. But I haven't tried to do it in easel but you could. And what we want is uh, for you to produce a video which you put on YouTube, and that video must show the process you use in Easel uh, to create your picture frame. And that process must show all the little detail about how you choose different tools, how you set up uh, Easel, and so on and so forth. It's not to be just about the x carve because that's, that's not the point. The point is it's about Easel. And uh, the full details of the competition will uh, be put in another short video which I'll produce once Inventables and I get the nitty-gritty agreed between us. But I do know in advance that Inventables are going to offer a prize of a $50 uh, gift voucher uh, which can be spent on the Inventables uh, website. And Inventables themselves will judge it, which I think is only fair. After all, Easel is their program. And I've already stated I'm not a fan of it. Oh. So there we go. There's the challenge. And more details will follow in a little video, which I'll release, hopefully, uh, very shortly. Now I'm going to do my best now to summarize this series of videos about building the new 750mm X-Carve. And I'm going to start straight away with the instructions. Inventables instructions are absolutely superb. They do tail off towards the end a little as you get further into the build, uh, but frankly, uh, they're still far better than many instructions that I've seen. And you can hardly go wrong. Uh, it, for the most cases, all the components are clearly marked. It's very easy to find. And, well, you saw. I got through it all, so it can't be that bad. Now, the design of the new machine, it's got so many improvements, and I'll just try and summarize a few of the important ones now. Uh, the, the new gantry is far stiffer, therefore you're gonna get far more accurate cuts. Uh, I, I like the way all the wiring has been improved. It's very simple now. Uh, the, the drag chains, they're, they're much better too. Uh, the X controller is an absolute dream because it's so easy now to connect everything up and you've got that emergency stop switch on top just in case. The Z probe is a great improvement. I know I've not really shown it working, uh, but I do intend to eventually uh, include that in some later videos. And this DeWalt router is an absolute dream. I've made a separate video about this a little while ago. It is a really good, powerful little router albeit with a quarter inch collet, but it's still a great machine. Now Inventables have introduced uh, new hold down clamps and they are absolutely brilliant. Uh, they uh, consist of a, a little post here uh, and then the actual clamping element like that uh, and then you put a screw through that and it's completely adjustable uh, and I, I found, found them to be absolutely Brilliant. Now the dust collection on this machine is much improved with this new style dust boot, uh, although frankly I think it could do with uh, longer bristles here and I think they need to do something about closing off this little gap at the back. I don't think that would be very difficult to sort out at all. And I'm really looking forward to using this machine on many more projects in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.